I'm in the process of making a proper 50 volt plus and minus power supply for the quad boards that I've just finished making a video on and hopefully you've watched. The, the 50 volts is not an issue because it's basically just a transformer which of course this is not. The point of showing you this is this is the speaker protection module because I've learnt my lesson that replacing tweeters and, and bass cones from your main hi-fi speakers is, is not for the faint-hearted. What I'm going to do is build the power supply, not on this video. The, the purpose of this video is to show you how to get the 12 volts AC that this module requires. Now the obvious answer is a small auxiliary transformer. And because the speaker protection module consumes 50 or 60 milliamps, you can almost say any transformer that will provide 12 to 15 volts will do the trick. That's the easy way, but there's another way that's more fun. This is the transformer I'm going to use for testing the quads. Its problem is here is the mains in, no problem, and here are the low voltage supplies. That's the, the ones that I've joined together are the center point and there's 50 volts. Well, actually there's 36 volts AC comes out of each of these wires. And by the time that's rectified and smoothed through, that will produce a fraction over 50 volts plus and minus, which is exactly what the quad needs. You can easily make this transformer into a, a, a transformer that will provide you the necessary 12 volts to run the little module. Easy peasy. Let me show you how. The first thing to do with any of these experiments is the unused cables for the moment. You must insulate the ends because a transformer like this, which incidentally is a 500 watt genuine rated transformer. And if you short these secondary cables together, it will pass hundreds of amps, literally hundreds of amps. And there will be a ball of fire here. And well, take it from someone that's done it. You don't want to mess with these transformers. They can produce enormous amounts of current. And just one turn of wire round it will only produce about one and a half volts at this size, but it's capable of passing over a hundred amps, which means it will become red hot in second. Now you'll notice at the moment, I've got this supported on this soft material, and I've also got one of the neoprene gaskets on there, because if, as you're gonna be scuffling around on the bench with this, you can quite easily damage the insulation on here, which is basically just tape. Now, the first thing we've got to do is to find out how many turns we need. Now, from my own experience, I would say probably about one turn will make one volt. Now, there are numerous ways you can calculate this way outside of my pay grade. If you're not looking for the ultimate in accuracy, for example, that particular model wants 12 to 15 volts AC. So it doesn't matter if you wind it. I shall aim for a nominal, say, 13 volts. But first of all, the easy way to find out how many turns you need is like this. I've got my test meter out and I've got it set for 2 volts AC. Now, whatever you do, you are making a turn of wire around the transformer. So make sure you haven't accidentally got it on the current range for the reasons I've explained. So I've just literally put one of the test leads with one turn. And if you look at that, that is basically one turn. So when I apply power, I would expect to get something anywhere between a quarter of a volt and one volt from that arrangement. So let's turn the power on. And we've actually got 
half a volt. That's fine. It just means for 12 volts, you'd need 24 turns. Let's talk about the kind of wire you can use for this. Now, obviously, a transformer itself is made of copper um, and it's enameled and the enamel is the insulation. Now, most people won't have this and it's, it's quite expensive to use. But this sort of cable, virtually most people will have. And it's, it's this particular one is single core. Now, I'd suggest using single core rather than multi-core simply because it's easier to manage, i.e. you bend it and it stays bent. We're only talking about very low currents here, 50 milliamps or so. So virtually any cable of this sort of thickness will give you that current. And that load on a transformer like this will have, well, un virtually unmeasurable changes. So first thing I need to do is find out how much wire we actually need because You've got to thread this through the transformer and go round it. So if the wire is too short that you cut off, you've got to make a joint. And I would suggest that joints on such a project is not a good idea. Forgive my messy bench because I'm actually working on three separate projects on the same bench. And uh, I really need a bigger bench. So we need to find out how much wire we need. So we put this through. So one turn is that amount of wire. Now let's see how long that is. In old money, it's eight and a half inches. So it's always better to have more than less. So we'll call that nine inches or in metric. It's 21 and a half. So we'll call it 22 centimeters well allowing for extra bits and an extra six inches on each end i think that's going to come to 19 to 20 feet now because this is just a single winding we don't need to worry about phase or anything like that so we'll start off and leave about six inches sticking out and tape that I'll tape it here it's got a place as any and it's a laborious job and I won't bore you with that because that will take probably about 15 minutes and one thing I forgot to mention is it's quite a good idea to have a piece of double sided sticky tape um, because it just literally keeps the windings in line for this kind of application it's not important whether the, the, the windings are close together or touching because they are insulated after all but just make it so it's comfortable now it's fairly important that the cable is kept kink free so before you make the next turn i would always sort of stretch the wire out because it's quite unwielding and uh, it can get a mess if you're not careful. Here we go with the next turn. As you can see, it's quite fiddly. And the first time you do it, bear in mind I haven't done this for probably 30 years, so it's almost like a learning curve all over again. Keep it relatively tight, tight, but not ridiculously so. Well, I've finished it. It's not the neatest job in the world, and I'm going to tape it round. But as this isn't going to be the finished product long term, I'm not going to tape it that much, so to speak, because all I want it to do is to be secure for this, this particular power supply, but it's not going to be a permanent insulation. If it was, I would use captain tape 
and wrap it round in the same way that the transformer is here. Well, I've connected my test meter up and let's see what voltage we get. Bearing in mind we need to be somewhere between 12 and 15 volts. So flip the switch. Hasn't gone bang, always a good sign. Um, it's a little high. Um, I'm surprised it's as, as high as that, but thinking about it, I can see why, because I allowed an extra 10 inches lead out wires and um, I've ended up connecting them. See, I've got a short wire here, so I'm going to take off two turns. It's very easy to take off a couple of turns, but very hard to put them on. So this way round is definitely the best. So I'll do that and we'll come back and see what volts we've got. I've taken off about a foot of cable and let's see what we've got. 13.2 and that's offload. So all we need to do now is to see whether it will drive that little circuit and what voltage drop we've got. So remember 13.2. Here are the wires from the transformer. Obviously it's AC, it doesn't matter which way around it goes. And I'm going to put the power on and the little LED just behind that capacitor, which I'm sure, you can see if I turn it around a bit, should flash and the relay should click in after several seconds, showing that the circuit is working. Obviously there's nothing connected to it, it's just checking that there's no DC offset, which clearly there isn't, because there's nothing connected to it. So let's have a look and see what happens. Right, it's flashing, and it's on, and the relays have clicked in. 13.19, so we've dropped a minuscule, I think it was 13.2, was well, yes, I don't think we've got any voltage drop. So, pretty good. I'll just let that cook for a while. And um, otherwise, I think we can say that's a goer. Well, there's just a quick little video. Project's done, and I've tidied it up slightly. But bearing in mind, as I did say, this is a temporary solution. But it only took me half an hour, I guess, and that's keep stopping for filming and positioning the camera rather unprofessionally but it all works and all that remains to do now is to link this power supply with smoothing and rectification and then connect the quads up which i have to say i've already done